Is that Hosanna or is it, is it Chungile? Let me just look. Yeah, I've got him here. Station is located one young leopard cub on the southern side of Gari Main in the Mromachi drainage. Animal is static. We've got this little Hosanna. Hello, boy. What did you give your mother for her birthday yesterday? And there's a squirrel shouting at him. I haven't seen him for now for three weeks. Now the reason I was laughing there was because I slammed on anchors and Craig came scudding forward off his seat and went, Ugh! Zach, you're wondering about... Oh! <laughs> There's another leopard just above us. Well, that's very exciting. Phew! There is Shongile. Zach, as we listen to this squirrel shouting at our two favorite characters, that's the, there is my favorite leopard right now, you say, are there any animals that call specifically leopard when they're alarm calling? Uh, certainly monkeys do. We know that monkeys have an individual call for leopards. I imagine that there are other species that do, but that we perhaps haven't picked up the sound before or picked up exactly the differences in the sound. Stations both of Karula's cubs are in this position at the junction of Gari Main with Umruamati. And I think she's trying to catch the squirrel. Young leopards do like to try and catch squirrels. Um, Craig, just let me go back a little bit. It might be a bit easier. I'll try not to slam the anchors on again so that you hurt yourself. Oh, that's lovely. Both of the cubs are here now. I'm just talking on the radio there. <laughs> now, if we move away, if we move away from the cub in the tree, from Shongile, just for a second, I wonder if Hosanna wasn't lying exactly there when we went past here before. Can you see him there, Craig? Just zoom right into the middle of your picture there. Up a bit. There he is. Can you see him? <laughs> and I wonder if he wasn't lying right there. Okay, quickly, sorry, let's go back to Shongile. She's now pre performing in a quite remarkable fashion. <laughs> Oh, what a relief this is to see these wonderful leopards, especially on a day like today. Sorry, Molly, I'm afraid I missed that question. Can we have it again, please, Becca? Oh, Molly, you say, who do I think will take over after Karula? Molly, I don't think that anyone's going to take over necessarily. I think what you'll find is that the territory will be divided. And it will be filled probably by shadow to the east. So she'll probably come, at least to the west, she'll probably come further east. I'm going to have to move forward, Craig. There's just a bit much going on behind us. Um, and then I think... We'll also find that, you know, Tundi would move in from the east and it would just sort of be filled up, but her territory won't be replaced as such. Now, maybe let's just look at Hosanna here. In fact, sorry, let me, let me get into a position, let me just reverse back into the drainage, then we can have both of them. 
and we're the only ones that are allowed to do that because we're the only ones from Juma over here. Osana is totally fearless of cars, it's so interesting. He's much less fearful of cars than he is of people on foot. All right, now we've got them both. There's the one up in the tree. I wonder where Karula is, she could easily be right here. Wonderful. <laughs> Happy Jay, you say, do they have fat bellies? Um, I think Hosanna probably does. He's been eating an impala with his father, quite interestingly. But I don't see hugely fat bellies on them at the moment, no. So they could probably eat if they wanted to. That's a lovely picture there, isn't it? So they have been eating, and we know that they've been eating pretty well. But I'm sure they could eat again. Karula's work is never done when it comes to feeding them. And what I've been thinking about of late is the fact that, you know, we talk often about the independence and when they go independent and how they go independent and does Karula chase them off, etc., etc. But I think what I've noticed amongst these two is that the process of independence is not a sudden one. It's not suddenly one day she decides that she's had enough of them. It's much longer than that. It takes much longer than that. And what I think we're seeing here is how the, it's a very gradual process. Where they just start to spend more and more time on their own. Well, Sana's coming across the road here. stocky little fellow. Yes, his belly does look full. Now this is exactly where we want him to be. He must come north into Juma. I wonder how often we've driven past these creatures and you know as the grass is so much longer than it has been. Can you imagine how often we're driving past these two leopards and of course their mother? You still see him there, Craig? <laughs> okay, let's stick with the one in the tree then for now. <laughs> I'll keep an eye out for Hosanna, see if he pops out. She's having a great time. The squirrel is still shouting at her, but he's managed to calm himself down after the initial fright of having a leopard there. Fastidiously, like her mother, remaining clean. But of course the males do that as well, don't they? Well, sometimes, um, Mike, you say do leopards normally have the same graceful way of landing that house cats do? Well, yes and no. Certainly Shongile, far more so than Hosanna, he tends to be fairly inelegant in his dismounts. You see, they're a lot heavier, and so when they land, it does look a lot heavier. 
They're much more elegant, for example, than lions when they come, in, go or descend from trees or anything that they've climbed. But they can sometimes find it a little awkward to go down vertically. I'm not sure if Hosanna is still there. Oh, yes, he is. I can just see him. So wonderful. Apparently there are a lot of people coming here from the south, so I'm not sure how long we're gonna have we're gonna be able to be here, but we're going to extend it for as long as we can. Hmm.